I was uh, excited to discover about two years after I moved here that Ithaca had its own piece of, of movie history. I started delving a little bit into that history and trying to come up with an idea of what could be done about that history and I subsequently uh, met my current business partner Connie Bruce and uh, we decided that we wanted to make something more concrete. We discovered that the original studio that the Whartons used as their production facility was still standing in beautiful Stewart Park. And um, we decided that we wanted to start an organization that would begin to uh, preserve and celebrate the movie history and to create a motion picture museum in the former studio. Ted Wharton, who came to Ithaca in 1912, and he brought his camera along because the studio that he worked for SNA in Chicago wanted to make some college films, and they knew Cornell University was a big university, so he brought his camera and he films a football game up at Cornell in October 1912. Went back, made it into a movie, and it was shown nationwide on December 5th, 1912. While he was the here, he noticed all the scenery, the gorges, the big buildings, the atmosphere that was here, and he knew back in Chicago they had to make those things, they had to make those sets, you know, and he realized that he had the real McCoy here. So he went back and he convinced them to let him come back here the next summer with a little film crew and to make some movies. And he came back that next year and made probably about 13 little short films. And wanted to stay here and was trying to get the film company was going to make their own studio here but they wouldn't do it so he resigned came here himself and got together with his brother who had been making movies over in new jersey at path a they came together in 1914 and formed their own movie company and started making movies in ithaca The story that we like to tell, I think, associated with that period is, and, and you see this reflected in the silent films, there really is a, a huge divide growing in the United States at that time. We're coming off uh, a gilded age where there were a lot of extremely wealthy capitalists, and you see a lot of that reflected in the silent films. But at the same time, this is a period where there were a great many disenfranchised people um, in the United States as well and some of the efforts that they were making uh, to enfranchise themselves. Um, I think it's an escape. It's a way of experiencing other people's lives, other people's experiences uh, vicariously. Um, I think at the time there was probably a lot of interest in this new technology that was available. Um, incredibly popular, but movies have never ceased being incredibly popular. So I think the strain uh, has carried right on through modern day. Looking at those films, there's a lot of the, the overt and kind of gross nationalism that appears. Um, and I think that's clearly an artifact of its time, but it's not that different from the bad guys in movies today. And um, you know, who we depict as bad guys tends to say a lot about who we are at any given period. Um, I was born in 76, grew up watching movies in the 80s. All the bad guys were Russians then. Well, it was the Cold War. So, um, you know, when I look at those Wharton films, to me they're a period piece. And they tell us a lot about, I think, who we wanted to be as a people at the time and, uh, and who we identified as threats. Over. We're coming over, and we won't come back till it's over, over there. Their final film, called The Eagle's Eye, I call it their final film, it was a serial, it was 20 episodes long, it was based on a true story about World War I. They filmed it all, had it done, and then the war ended. And people didn't want to see war pictures anymore. When the uh, servicemen came back from the war, they brought the flu with them. There was a 1918 flu epidemic. 
and they closed down the movie theaters for about six to nine months because it was a big gathering place where lots of people were and they didn't want to spread the disease and they were just learning about how bad it could be and lots of people were dying so they made a movie about the war which people didn't want to see they closed the movie theaters because of an epidemic which wasn't something that they could control and that made it they failed they had no money they were bankrupt it was kind of over August of 2010, I was on the job for probably a couple weeks when I got an email and phone call from Diana Reisman, the Motion Picture Project, interested in meeting with me and talking about what they were up to. It um, became pretty clear to me that they were passionate about what they were doing. They had some, at the time, what I thought to be some very ambitious goals, and uh, I needed a big project to sink my teeth into, and, uh, and it certainly was a big project. Uh, so it appealed to me right off the bat. 2011, we decided that it was time for Ithaca Motion Picture Project to do something exhibit-based. It was time to show the kinds of exhibits that we would want to do in the museum. So we came up with a concept for uh, an exhibit. And what was born was uh, Romance, Exploits, and Peril when movies were made in Ithaca. And it was a starting in October of 2011, we put on this exhibit. And um, it was a big success. And I think the quality of the exhibits was very, very high. Um, and they were informative and engaging. And uh, we, uh, because we, we had them in public spaces, we had a lot of foot traffic. <laughs> of the Wharton Studio Museum, the Motion Picture Museum, is the sort of the central mission of the Ithaca Motion Picture Project. So everything that we've been doing up to this point has um, been leading towards that museum. So all the work we've done to broaden awareness of motion picture history uh, of Ithaca owns the building. Uh, they own the park that the building is in. So our big work ahead is working with the mayor's office and planning and the Board of uh, Public Works to uh, obtain the license to the building. If you don't work to uh, preserve history, it disappears. Uh, we all know this with buildings. Buildings eventually, if not taken care of, historic buildings can, can fall apart. This studio building is one of a handful of motion picture studios still standing in the country. It's an amazing artifact of a bygone era. Uh, Ithacans, you know, and, and everyone love local history. And uh, this is a very unique story. Uh, and we're, we're, you know, lucky to have this movie studio here uh, in Ithaca, and we should exploit that to, in the best sense of the word and uh, create an educational and cultural destination that people can uh, learn from and enjoy. The challenge for us that we have here, and it's a good challenge, is uh, encouraging people and finding ways to engage people uh, to think about their past as a community. It's one of these things that we all share. If we're residents of Tompkins County, whether we're students here for a couple of years or we're here for the rest of our lives, we're all part of this thing right now, and this thing has a history, and it's a, it's a pretty unique story. Thank you.